The sum function is great because it allows you to quickly add a bunch of numbers in Excel. However, it's not always the best choice. In fact, I will show you four different scenarios where you should not use the sum function and use the subtotal function instead. Let's take a look at scenario number one. Here we have some regions and the total sales numbers for these regions over a span of two quarters. The goal is to calculate the totals for quarter one, quarter two, and the grand total. Well, if you were to use the sum function, you'd select cell C9 and then enter the sum function. And then you'd select the four sales numbers above, close parentheses, and press enter. You could then copy this formula and paste it into cell C14 to get the total for quarter number two. But what about the grand total? To calculate the sum, you'd have to select cell C15 and then type in the sum function and select the sales numbers for quarter one, add a comma, and then also select the sales numbers for quarter two. Of course, since there are only two quarters here in this example, that's not too bad. But imagine if you were working with years of data instead. It would take quite a while to select all of those ranges. This is where the subtotal function is a much better idea. Deleting all of the totals that we just calculated, you can calculate the sum for the first quarter by selecting cell C9 and then enter in the subtotal function. Now the subtotal function is actually capable of performing many different types of calculations, but in this case, we want to use it to calculate the sum specifically. So to force the subtotal function to calculate the sum, you must make the first argument of this function a nine. Now for the second argument, you can simply select the range of numbers that you want to sum just like you would with the sum function. After that, add a closing parentheses and press enter, and you get back the total sales for quarter number one. And just like before, you can copy cell C9 and then paste the formula into cell C14. Now for the grand total, this is where the subtotal function really shines in comparison to the sum function. With the sum function, you had to select the individual ranges so that you didn't accidentally include the total values that have already been calculated. But the beauty of the subtotal function is that it will automatically ignore any numbers that have also been calculated by a subtotal function. So to get the grand total, all you have to do is select cell C15 and then enter in the subtotal function, make the first argument a nine so that you calculate the sum, and then you can select the entire range of sales data, even including the totals in Q1 and Q2. Once you press enter, the subtotal function will ignore any numbers that have also been calculated by a subtotal function and give you back the correct grand total result. And this is just scenario number one. Let's look at three more. Here we have the same data as before, just replicated twice. The difference is that I've set up the first data set to use the sum function as you see here. And I've set up the second data set to use the subtotal function instead. This way, you can easily see the difference between the two. You may have also noticed that I've added some filter buttons to the data as well. Now what happens when you filter the data? For instance, let's say you filter out the south and west regions. Once you apply the filter, you will notice that the values calculated by the sum function over in the first data set do not change. They stay just as they were before. But what about the second data set? Here you can see that all of the totals have been updated. Specifically, the totals have been updated to ignore the rows that have been filtered out and are no longer visible. This is yet another advantage that the subtotal function has over the sum function. The subtotal function will automatically update to exclude those numbers that have been hidden by a filter. The sum function, however, will not behave this way at all. It will simply continue to calculate just like it did before. And so, if you want your numbers to change and reflect only those cells that have not been filtered out, then you want to be sure that you use the subtotal function instead of the sum function. 
Now let's say that instead of filtering the data, you go the route of manually hiding the rows instead. What happens in this case? Well, let's go ahead and hide a few rows. This time, it looks like neither the sum function nor the subtotal function have excluded the hidden rows. There's nothing that you can do about the sum function, but what about the subtotal function? Well, if you select cell F9, you can change the first argument of the subtotal function to a 109. In other words, you can just put a 10 in front of the 9. And then, once you change this argument and press enter, the subtotal function now excludes the values within each hidden row. And so, if you select cell F14 and change the 9 to a 109, and then select cell F15 and change the 9 to a 109, now your subtotal functions are all excluding values that have been manually hidden. And that is just another amazing aspect of the subtotal function. You can modify it to either include or not include those values that have been manually hidden. And once again, you don't have that option with the sum function, but you do with the subtotal function. And the same principle also applies when you manually group cells as well. Here, I've grouped the regions for quarter one and quarter two of the data. I have also configured the subtotal functions to use 109 as the first argument instead of just 9. And now, if I hide one or both of the groups, the subtotal function updates to only account for those numbers that are visible. And of course, the sum function doesn't do that. The sum function just continues to add together all of the values regardless if they are hidden or visible. And so once again, we have a scenario where the subtotal function reigns supreme. And so, if you ever find yourself in any of the situations or scenarios that I have presented to you in this video, then opt to use the subtotal function instead of the sum function. This one change can potentially save you a lot of time, a lot of headache, and a lot of effort. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, I highly encourage you to give it a like, and if you want to see more like it, then I also encourage you to subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something new, and until next time, I will see you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.